You know, we've been talking in recent days about the importance of Bad Boon <coughs> to the musical entertainment genre of the 50s and 60s. Now, getting into movies, some were hits, some were misses, and some were head scratchers. Now, this version of State Fair, I think it was the third or fourth one that was put together for the big screen, but this version, although successful in a certain way, didn't really add or subtract to Pat Boone's career. If anything, he was the only uh, shining light in it besides Anne Margaret. Now, this came out in 1962, directed by all people, Jose Ferrer, and starred Pat Boone, uh, Teen Throb, Bobby Darren, Anne Margaret, the great Tom Yule, Pamela uh, Tiffin, and Alice Faye. This was a remake of the Turning Tree version of State Fair and the 45 version. It was considered to be a financially and critically unsuccessful film. Richard Rogers, whose collaborator Oscar Hammerstein had died in 1960, wrote additional songs for both the music and the lyrics. Now, uh, this was the adaptation of a 32 novel by Phil Stong. While the Turning Tree and 45 version was set at the Iowa State Fair, the 62 version was set in Texas. The family drive through Dallas where the State Fair of Texas is held. It was filmed on sound stages as 20th Century Fox in California and on location at various places in Texas at Mooney's Grove Park in uh, Visalia, California, and at the Oklahoma State Fair Raceway in Oklahoma City, home of the Oklahoma State Fair, where the climactic speedway sequence are shot. The novel State Fair will be dramatized twice more following the 62 film. The first stage for fair stage musical, which utilized a variety of Rogers and Hammerstein songs, many originally written for projects not related to State Fair, was first produced in 69. A revised version of the stage musical was produced in the 1990s and eventually played on Broadway. A non-musical version of State Fair was also filmed for TV in 76. That doesn't make any sense at all. Now again, screenplay by Richard L. Breen, Oscar Hammerstein, Sonia Levine, and Paul Green, and uh, based, of course, on the State Fair movies. Produced by Charles Brackett, cinematography by William Millor, edited by David Breton. Music, of course, by Richard Rogers, 20th Century Fox. Two hours. The budget was around $4.5 million, uh, with $3.5 million returns, although the British box office was said to be a little bit successful as well. Now, Fox production head Buddy Adler announced the film in January 60, with Rogers and Hammerstein slated to write new songs for it. Bracken was named producer, and Lang, Walter Lang was named director. It would again be the third version of the film produced by Fox. Adler said that he hoped that the film would be ready for Christmas, and it would uh, not be a musical, but it will have plenty of songs from Rogers and Hammerstein. Now, Bracken called the story a beautiful property. It's a story about people with simple projects with which the audience can really get involved. Now, production was delayed when Adler died in July 1960. Hammerstein died the following month, at which point Rogers decided to write the lyrics himself. Now, Jose Ferreira had just made return to Peyton Place for Fox and was signed to direct. The female lead was given to Anne Margaret, who was under contract to Fox. They had loaned her to Paramount to make her first film, Pocketful of Miracles, and this would be her second. Bound by the terms of an old commitment to Fox, she was paid, get this, only $500 a week during her three months of work on the production. Now, Faye came out of retirement to play the mother. She wanted Don Amici to play her husband, but the role went to Yule. The film was shot in September, October 61 at the Texas Fairgrounds in Oklahoma City State Fairgrounds. Getting Anne Margaret for less than $5,000. My God, ladies and gentlemen, my God. Uh, talk about underpaid. Now, uh, a Dallas teenager named Marvin Lee Ede, later to find fame as singer Meatloaf, made his first screen appearance at State Fair as an extra. He and a friend can be seen pointing at a hog during the scene that features Tom Mule. Of course, the songs include Our State Fair, It Might As Well Be Spring, That's For Me, Never Say No To A Man, It's A Great Night For Singing, Willing and eager, this is in heaven. The little things in Texas, more than just a friend, and is it kind of fun? Of course, the uh, the soundtrack came out on Dot, as Boone had an exclusive con- con- contract with the label. Now, according to Kinema Talk, uh, Talk Weekly, the film was considered a moneymaker at the British box office in 62. But according to Diabolik uh, magazine, uh, which came out much later, it uh, it just doesn't work. It's not the material. But uh, the sound of music was cheesy. That came along three years later. I feel the main problem is too many key people were miscast. He said only uh, Pat Boone really stood out. Bobby Darren was miscast, Pamela Tiffin, Tom Yule, everybody else. Now, uh, and Alice Faye looks like an old, old Alice Faye. The one exception is Pat Boone, who was far better than Dick Ames. 
The idea with State Fair, and we're going to go over this just very quickly, what the reviewer in the Diabellica was saying is that uh, Pat Boone is far better than Dick Ames, but he can't save things. Now, uh, the guy said, I feel the main problem is too many key people were miscast. Ferrer was not the right director, and most of the cast fall short of the 45 version. Yule seems too urban to play Pa compared to Charles Winninger. Tiffin it looks like an Irma Ditz rather than a sweet naive country girl. Girl like Jean Crane, Darren, another pop star turned actor, comes across as sleazy rather than sharp, like Dana Andrews. I don't think Dana Andrews <laughs> was seen as sharp, just Dana Andrews. And Margaret was always better as good girls who looked as though they wanted to be naughty in Viva Las Vegas and Bye Bye Birdie rather than straight out naughty girls. Again, Alice Faye looks like Alice Faye coming out of retirement. This was her last film, whereas Faye Banter felt like a character. Now, I only seen uh, State Fair once, and Pat Boone at one point was bigger than Elvis in Northern New Brunswick, and I know that sounds bizarre, but uh, with the young girls, they never really got into Elvis, but Pat Boone was a big draw. Now, Pat Boone did TV, music, and stuff. State Fair was very, very big in the Protestant communities up in the North Shore. Now, I know that sounds kind of weird, but the Catholic communities were big on Westerns and action, where Pat Boone, the crooner. And ladies and gentlemen, now I, I know it's completely bizarre. Pat Boone left millions on the table. He could have done the military uh, route like uh, uh, Paul Anka, you know, uh, you know, the longest day and stuff like that. I would like to see Pat Boone in a uh, a big, uh, you know, a uh, big military movie. But Pat Boone, like I said, I only seen it once. He was very strong in this movie. I have to give him credit. The man, the man can act in musically speaking. So ladies and gentlemen, let's put this in perspective. It's 2023. Pat Boone's been around for how long now? And in the words of Alice Cooper, I did, didn't think he was being serious. Little side, remember he was uh, made a bet he'd dress up like a, like a heavy metal star if, if Alice Cooper dressed up like in golf gear. And, uh, you know, Pat Boone showed up, no Alice Cooper, you know, in a, in a heavy metal mood, as we say. I don't agree with Pat Boone's religious or uh, Republican politics, but, my God, the, the talent is there. Uh, you, what would the world be like without Pat Boone? My God, you know, it's a lot of, lot of people wouldn't have been made happy if he wouldn't ever exist. So. And he's the last, pretty well the last of that era, still living and still producing. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what we're doing with our Pat Boone podcast, that's a weird comment coming from a Acadian Métis Jew in the North Shore. Give us a like, comment, subscribe, or share. Thanks for listening. Bye.